I'm ready. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to reinstall that oil girdle or the um, splash girdle, reinforcement girdle, whatever you would like to call it, <coughs> back onto the engine. Uh, I did spend some time this week. I cleaned a lot of this hardware, got a lot of the varnish off of it. Also, thread chased a lot of these holes uh, just to make sure there wasn't anything going on in there that would prevent a bolt from threading and smoothing when you know to torque it back in place. Clean this up uh, really best that I could. I mean, this, this heavy varnish, I could spend more time cleaning it up and getting it off, but uh, there's, no, there's no wind to be had there really by doing so. <clears throat> and this will only go on one way because it has to clear the, uh, that little mounting plate there for the uh, oil pickup tube. And uh, we will be installing a new oil pickup tube because I found a very large amount of plastic in the oil pan. And in the stock pickup tube, uh, it was just completely, had a bunch of stuff in there. I don't, I, don't, I can't even begin to, can't begin to figure out what it was. But, you know, when I found the little bits of plastic in the oil pan and I uh, compared it to what was in the pickup tube that came off this car, uh, something broke at some point. That's all I know. These are tens. We're gonna torque these down, but I'm just gonna snug them up right now. All right. Could not find an official torque spec for these bolts, but there is an official torque spec that BMW lists for uh, <coughs> varying bolts of different sizes and classes. So, a class 8.8 .8 bolt uh, with an M6. Uh, an M6 class 8.8 .8 bolt is uh, 10 newton meters generically, which is roughly 89 inch pounds. So we're just going to go off that. And we're going to start from the inside and work our way to the outside. Alright, next we're going to install the oil pump. Uh, I'm just going to prime this or pre prime it just so that there is oil in this pump when the engine starts. All I'm doing here is I'm just pumping some oil into the inlet. And then I'm just going to rotate the input shaft. doesn't matter which way you spin it, once you start to feel some resistance, that's when the uh, pump is pretty much primed. And it did have some oil leak out, of course. Not really shocked by that. <laughs> it's alright. But, you know, the pump does have some oil in it, and that's all that matters. Torque spec on the oil pump bolts is 26 newton meters. It's about 14 to 17 foot pounds, somewhere in that region. Okay, I did mention I was going to install a new uh, pickup tube. I'm installing the Z3 reinforced version. Uh, if you compare these two side by side, uh, you'll see the Z3 version has this extra tab and the standard one does not. Also the reason why I'm replacing this is there's a bunch of stuff that is stuck inside of this pickup strainer and uh, that kinda bothers me. We want to install that but this was an unexpected 
cost, but I did kind of budget for some contingencies like this, so um, this made all the sense to just replace it. Plus, the reinforced version is less likely to break here, which is a very common issue with these on uh, race applications. And the key to uh, installing this is you want to kind of keep everything loose at first. Uh, don't tighten anything down 100% until every single fastener is aligned properly. Just for reference, you're going to need some kind of universal socket to get underneath the pickup tube here to be able to even tighten this uh, lower bolt. There's just no way of getting to it. Uh, a quarter inch 10 millimeter universal is going to be the one that you're going to want. I mean, you can kind of see how I have to work underneath from this angle. Uh, there's no way you would ever be able to install this without that type of universal socket, which is not possible. Use the smallest ratchet you have during assembly because that way you're not going to be able to over torque anything or fight something so that it threads into place. You don't want to do that. Cool. All right, <clears throat> so we are totally tight with our oil pickup and the oil pump. Next we're going to install the oil pump sprocket and safety wire the oil pump nut. Uh, here's our oil pump sprocket. I cleaned this up and uh, here's our new oil pump nut. You should replace these. As you can see I went ahead and drilled the end of it so there's a hole that passes through. That hole is going to be uh, used to safety wire um, the nut to the sprocket. Installing a new oil pump chain uh, this is an IVIS racing chain, so they're listed to be 30% stronger, more durable. We're going to fully seat our uh, crank sprocket. Now, in terms of the installation of the sprocket, it can only go on one way because the offset of the, of the chains uh, or the, the sprocket portion here, because there's two sprockets, one's for the main chain, one's for the oil pump, uh, this is only going to line up one way. Uh, so if you slide this on and the oil pump sprocket doesn't line up with the chain sprocket or the crank sprocket, uh, then you know you have it on incorrectly. You could also visually confirm this as well. All right, so I'm going to be using the uh, crankshaft counter hole tool. So that I can counter hold the crankshaft and torque the oil pump nut. Remember, it is left hand thread. Um, so your typical mechanical torque wrench is not going to be able to uh, torque the nut. You're going to have to use either an electronic wrench or find a mechanical wrench that can do uh, left hand thread, which there are some out there. five newton meters. So the next step, uh, we're going to go ahead and safety wire the oil pump nut. Like I mentioned, I had drilled a hole um, on a factory oil pump nut. Now you can buy these pre-drilled, but it's kind of a rip off because as long as you have decent drill bits, you can easily uh, make your own drilled oil pump nut. So we're starting with our safety wire. We're going to run it through the hole that we drilled in the nut. And, you know, we want to get this relatively equal length. Now, we're going to be safety wiring it to this portion of the sprocket. So, with that said, we're going to have a slightly longer lead on this end of the wire. Since this end of the wire needs to come this way. 
like so. Now the safety wire pliers I have will wind the safety wire clockwise so I'm gonna kinda get a twist going down here just so that it's tight or it'll start twisting down here which is where I want it to put tension and the reason why we're twisting in this direction or using the safety wire in this direction is the nut gets torqued the left hand thread so you want to put tension on the direction in which the fastener tightens and clamp down and we're gonna go ahead and start a twist alright it's pretty good I like the way that looks nice and uniform twists you want about seven to eight twists per inch that's kind of the the standard alright so in terms of our next move so you can see how the twist ends here I'm gonna take this part of the wire and run it down behind the sprocket in the opening like so And the reason for that is it's already twisted in that direction. And so when we bring it, bring the wires through and start twisting on this end, um, we're not going to have to worry about this twist unraveling there. Take our safety wire pliers, clamp on again. And we're going to go ahead and twist it again. We do want it slightly tighter on this end than we on, on that end, only because um, we're going to be cutting the wire here and we want some of the strength of the wire to basically hold it twisted together. Nice. So it's nice and tight. We'll go ahead and cut it. And now, uh, this is a sharp end. We obviously don't want it sticking out. So I'm going to go ahead and bend it under, like so. I'm going to go ahead and just twist that under and crimp it together so that, you know, we don't cut ourselves in the future if we ever have to take this apart. And then this pigtail end, we can just kind of work under and up against the nut. We have a safety wire oil pump nut and we don't have to worry about this nut potentially backing off in the future. Between the red Loctite and the safety wire, uh, there shouldn't be a problem, but that's how you safety wire an oil pump nut on any of these straight six engines for BMW. So what I'm doing now is uh, cleaning the mating surface for the oil pan gasket. Just using one of these, uh, uh, I don't even know what, to, uh, it's basically croaker's cloth. Throwing some brake parts cleaner on it and just giving the, the mounting surface or the mating surface a nice scrub and getting it as clean as possible so this new oil pan gasket can seal. So what you put the oil pan gasket on, you need to put a bead of RTV right here to fill in this gap. And you need to do the same at the front. I will do it at the front when I put the timing cover on. Uh, but I'm not going to do it for this in the rear until I actually put the new rear main seal on. So we're at the point now where we're going to install the oil pan. Um, as I mentioned, uh, we now have a, uh, a welded-in oil pan baffle. This is from Achilles Motorsport and Autosport Fab, uh, or Autosport Fabrication uh, did this for me. They welded it in, cleaned up everything. Uh, you know, this is a trap door style baffle. You can hear the doors opening. So, you know, it should help keep oil around the pickup tube, or at least that's the concept. Now, I'm using a uh, Corteco oil pan gasket. These only go on one way. And before I install the gasket, we're going to take our dry bond again. And we're going to put a thin bead here, right along where the timing cover meets the block. There we go. And that will take up any slack that's left over or any gap that the oil pan gasket itself 
can't fill. Only doing it at the front timing cover uh, because I still need to take the rear main seal cover off and I have to do that off of the engine stand otherwise it's never I'm not gonna be able to get it off. And we'll just deal with that later that's not a huge deal. We're just gonna put this in place I'm just gonna drop it into place like so. The uh, extra RTV will push out and then we're gonna go ahead and drop our oil pan into place uh, but what we want to do with the oil pan is we want to make sure that it's completely even with the engine block in the rear. There is some adjustability here, but uh, you want to make sure that, like I said, the uh, oil pan sits flush against the engine block. Part of the transmission bolts to the belt, or bolts to not only the engine, but also the oil pan. So if those aren't even one another, you're going to put a lot of pressure on the aluminum. And you'll probably break your oil pan, which, you know, for obvious reasons you don't want to do. So I'm gonna take extra time right now to line this line this up and make sure we're even. Alright, we're gonna run all of these bolts down now. Everything is lined up. And just like the uh, timing cover, these are all M6 bolts, so uh, 10 newton meters is the torque spec. And we're just going to torque all these down. Now that uh, these bolts have been tightened and are not going to be touched again, do the same thing as we did with those timing cover bolts. Put a nice little tamper proof mark on them. So all of the oil pan bolts that have been torqued, like I said, I marked them with the uh, Daikin cross check. And then these four bolts on the back of the oil pan right here, uh, these go right into the rear main seal cover, which I can't remove until this is off the stand, so I'm not even going to worry about those right now. That's not a problem, because when these bolts get tightened down, it'll torque on the oil pan gasket, and we'll also put a bead of that uh, 1290 drive bind on it as well. So. Uh, no reason to worry about that, but every bolt that's been torqued externally to the engine, uh, we've already marked. So, like I said, this stuff is a lot better than using a traditional paint pen. A lot more expensive, but um, there's no doubt when this stuff uh, fails that you have a loose bolt. You can have a paint mark fastener that spins 360 degrees and ends up right exactly where the paint mark is, and you'll think it's not, uh, you'll think it's fine and then you later find out that it actually is loose. Uh, this stuff, if the bolt moves even the slightest, it breaks. And so, if you see the mark missing on any of these bolts, that's your dead giveaway. So, like I said, it's worth having, especially if you're doing an engine build or something which is a uh, torque sensitive application. I don't suspect many of these will ever have a problem, but I'd rather be 100% sure. I just want to introduce you to this stuff and why it's a big advantage over your traditional paint marking.